Let's take a few minutes and talk about solar charge controllers. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Now almost every single time I discuss solar panels or batteries here on the channel, solar charge controllers get brought up. And I've never really covered those in the past too terribly much. So today I want to take just a few minutes and kind of walk through two or three different varieties of solar charge controllers and why you need one. Now speaking of needing one, in almost every single instance, you're going to need some sort of solar charge controller. The job of the charge controller is to take the higher voltage of a solar panel and drop it down to the exact voltage that your particular battery needs to charge. Now, that voltage is going to depend on the type of battery that you have, and that's something when you're shopping for solar charge controllers, you definitely need to pay attention to. Some of them on the market are geared for a very specific battery type, and others can be programmed for multiple different battery chemistries. So it depends on your battery as to which charge controller you need. If you're running lithium iron phosphate, uh, if you're running gel, if you're running SLA, Whatever type of chemistry you're running in your battery, just make sure that the charge controller you choose supports that chemistry. The next thing you need to know before you go to pick a solar charge controller is how much amperage it's capable of handling. One that I've got here on the table today will only handle about 10 or 10 and a half amps of power coming from the solar panels but you'll need to know roughly how much power you're going to be generating from your panels under ideal conditions and make sure that you get a solar charge controller that can handle that amperage. Something else to consider is the type of solar charge controller. There's basically two different types on the market. You've got PWM and MPPT. PWM is power width modulated and MPPT is multi-point tracking or multi-powerpoint track, something along those lines. I'll put it across the screen here because I can't remember off the top of my head. MPPT is going to be slightly more efficient than PWM. I personally use a PWM charger most of the time just because I like one specific charge controller for all of its other features even though it uh, doesn't have MPPT technology built in. I still prefer that one. So you will see some advantages over uh, are using MPPT over PWM, but I haven't found it to make a big enough difference to really be concerned with. Now, you can spend kind of whatever you want to on a charge controller. You can pick one up for around 10, maybe 20 bucks off of Amazon that will get the job done for a basic little controller. And some of those even have meters built in that'll show you how much input and how much output is going to and from the battery. One of the first solar charge controllers that I started out with is a Gennison GV10. And this is a fantastic little charger. It's in this water resistant housing. So uh, I didn't really ever have to worry about this while it was out in maybe some slightly inclement weather. There's a couple of things I don't care for in this particular charger most of the time though. First of all, I don't like these wires hanging off of the side. When you get this, all you get is this little terminal strip right here. And then I had to make up a couple of wires and put power poles on them to feed into and out of this charge controller. The other thing that I'm not a big fan of is I don't get a lot of information from this charge controller. The only thing it has on it is a little bitty LED light. Maybe you guys can see that right here. Uh, that's the only indicator that you have as to uh, whether it's charging or whether it's not. Now, it does give you a little bit of uh, information. I think the faster the LED flashes on this, the more amperage you're getting from your solar panels and the slower it flashes, uh, the less amperage you're getting. But that's about all the information you get. What is more, what is less? Well, I'm sure it tells you in the uh, manual when you, know, when you cross that threshold but it just doesn't give you a lot of data with just the charge controller. Now, you can marry that up with something like one of these watt meters and put this in line between 
the panel and the solar charge controller and that would give you a bit more information about what you're getting uh, into the charge controller from the panels. If you wanted to also read uh, the, what's going into and out of your battery, you're going to need at least one more of these. So that just makes it a little bit more to keep up with when I've got two or three pieces that I've got to worry about, making sure everything's plugged up correctly, just the extra wire and whatnot that's laying around. It makes this uh, my second choice of charge controller. I do use this still on a regular basis, but I don't use it as much with ham radio. I typically use this uh, when we're out in the RV with an external uh, panel that I can sit out on the ground and gather some light. In that particular case, I've got a charge controller inside and a Bluetooth shunt that's going to give me a lot of the data that I would get from a, uh, an LED display on this or from one of these little guys. My absolute favorite for probably the last two years, this is actually the second one of these that I've owned and I mentioned it just a second ago, is the Buddy Pole Power Mini or the Power Mini 2. This happens to be version 2. I also had version 1 before this and I ended up selling it after I got version 2. This is a literally an all-in-one device. Now, I did mention that it's PWM uh, technology, so it's not quite as efficient as the Genesign, but this panel right here on the front gives me all of the details that I need, both what the solar panel is generating and what the battery is consuming. In addition to that, it's got power poles on both ends of it. So I've got a power pole here that connects to the battery. This one over here connects to the solar panel. And then these two over here, we can connect up different loads to. Uh, in addition to that, it also has a USB port. Uh, I believe that's USB-A that's on this end here. Now, not with the Power Mini 1, but with the Power Mini 2, this USB port actually has enough amperage coming out of it to run a Raspberry Pi 4, if that's something that you're interested in. So this is definitely my go-to uh, for radio these days. And until Genesun comes out with something equivalent where it's got the built-in power poles and a built-in meter, I'm probably going to stick with the Power Mini 2. Now, the Genesun chargers are specific to the type of battery that you're running. So, this one is specifically designed for lithium iron phosphate and can't be used with any other battery technology. Although, they do make one of these for SLA, but if you bought that one, then you couldn't use it with lithium iron phosphate. Contrast that with the Power Mini 2. This one can actually be programmed uh, through the buttons and the display on the front to charge several different types of battery chemistry. So I know this one will handle SLA and it will handle lithium iron phosphate. I believe, if I remember right, this one will also handle lithium ion. Now, I believe I already mentioned that you can pick these up uh, off of Amazon, some of the cheaper charge controllers for as little or 10, uh, as little as 10 to $20. If you go with something like the Genesun, the GV10, I believe these are around a hundred bucks right now. And if you move up to something like the Power Mini 2, you're looking at about 165 retail on these right now. I have seen a couple of these floating around at Hamfest, so you might want to check the flea market area of Hamfest the next time you're out and about and see if you can find one of these and maybe save a few bucks on it. Just take a small little three amp hour battery with you and that'll allow you to plug up and test and make sure that everything is working as it's supposed to. Guys, I hope you found this information helpful today. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.